Hello friends, welcome to Kind Karma Talks by Kush. Today we are bringing uh, Adhik Kadam, a heroic heart and a heroic soul. He is Indian social entrepreneur and he is on peace building mission. In the areas of Jammu and Kashmir, Mr. Kadam has completed his uh, master's degree in political science. He is founder and chairman of Borderless World Foundation. Look at the name. Such a fantastic name. Only if we eliminate the borders, we can love peacefully because there is no really reason to distinguish and discriminate on any basis. We are all happy and blessed to be on earth and we should actually enjoy that without those markings everywhere around us. Well, coming back to the topic, he is founder of uh, Borderless One Foundation, which is an NGO that works for deprived and victimized people of border areas of India. His NGO runs four orphanage homes for girls in four districts of Jammu and Kashmir. His social work covers healthcare, education, empowerment of women, hygiene, art, culture, poverty, alienation at grassroots level. BWF, Borderless World Foundation today houses around 230 girls. More than 110 girls have been reintegrated into their communities and 40 girls are pursuing their higher education. He has been working for the cause of reintegrating communities in conflict zone with his approach of healing with compassion for past 22 years. His vision is to bring back the culture of faith that the communities in Kashmir have lived with since generations, but no such memories remain to be passed to the next. And Adhik is working tirelessly to solve this problem in his own way which he believes can be solved by healing a human heart. And I completely agree with him because healing a heart brings a scope of love. It makes the space for something beautiful to be gained inside, which can only happen with compassion. His foundation and he himself has won quite a few awards Mother Teresa Award for Social Justice from the Harmony Foundation 2010, Yuva Mesh, sorry, Yuvan Mesh 2011 Award from Indra Dhanush Foundation 2011, the Spirit of Masket Award, the Masket Foundation in 2012, Times Group Youth Icon in 2011 and 2012. So, those are without any further delay, let us welcome Mr. Adhik Kadam. Thank you so much for giving us your time, Adhik. You, we would like to know everything about your NGO and your work. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for inviting me for the show. Uh, uh, and thank you so much uh, for uh, connecting me with uh, more good lives in, in, uh, in this journey. Uh, uh, I'm basically working in Jammu and Kashmir state uh, uh, since last 22 years, and uh, uh, we are running uh, five orphanage homes for girls, children who lost parents in violence, terrorism. Uh, and uh, when we are closely, we are having like uh, 230 children of whom, whom uh, we are actually taking care in the in the in this uh, through these five homes. And uh, uh, also near about 25 or uh, 27 girls are studying outside Jammu and Kashmir for higher education. Uh, like you know, girls from Kashmir now they are in Kanyakumari, uh, Bangalore, Bangalore, and you know, different higher education courses. So uh, these girls we adopted at the age of like nine months or one year or two and a half or two year old and now they are like an extra 18, 20 years, now they are 20 plus. So many girls are 20 plus, so now even more than 108, 12 girls, they already, they already get you know, uh, married now, they are settled in their life, they are, few, uh, are having children. So, you know, we are just trying our level best to, uh, you know, help these girls who are in the conflict or uh, who lost parents in violence and, uh, you know, uh, we are just trying to save them, you know, save these girls, save these girls as, as much as we can so that, we, you know, make them stand and, uh, you know, uh, Again, we can uh, settle them in the same community because ultimately these uh, girls are the future, you know, there are mothers, they are a guru or teacher to their, you know, uh, upcoming generation. So the generation is coming through them. So this is like, you know, this is just a little long, you know, uh, way to basically heal a community. If you want to bring a peace in the conflict uh, region, 
uh, you know, I feel like, uh, uh, I think, and even, you know, I understand deeply that woman uh, 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 or motherhood having that capacity to uh, you know, heal the, uh, heal that, that conflict uh, in such community and that's why we are working for the girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm basically from Pune, uh, I'm basically from Pune, Maharashtra. Uh, uh, at age 19, I went to Kashmir in 1997 and since then I'm there. Awesome. So, uh, this is amazing work, first of all, let me tell you that. And uh, so, such beautiful thoughts you have. Um, of course, I mean, if you focus on women, you're actually focusing on the future of the world because that's how it begins. Uh, how did it all start? Uh, you are doing amazing, having four places over there. Uh, I think it's in different places of Jammu and Kashmir. So, you were in political science and... Uh, why Kashmir? Why this area? If you, you know, you could have chosen something else or uh, some other kind of uh, any good karma, uh, you know, um, I'm sure you uh, being in India, there are so many other options to give back to society and, you know, try to create a beautiful world um, ahead for us and for our upcoming generations. But then why this particular thing? Why this connected with you more than anything else? Uh, basically, uh, it's not. See, we, uh, life is completely unknown to everyone. Uh, every, so for us, life is totally unknown. The <laughs> next moment is unknown. We so, don't know why we are, we are doing this. Uh, you know, why we are doing this? Sometimes, we, we, few ones maybe may understand, but uh, but you know, many you know, we are not aware about you know what is what is coming to us. You know, everything is unknown. You no, know, next true. moment is unknown. Very true, very true. And let me tell you this: you have taken up a big, big challenge. It's not an easy one, <laughs> and you are doing it such commendably with all those awards and since so many years. So kudos to you, absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, ma'am, this is this is uh, see, see uh, this is a, this is not a social work, you know. This is a spiritual journey. When any any social work, you know, whatever you are doing, when it's become a sadhana or become you know devotion, you are putting all your dedication and devotion in, into it. Then it, it just become your spiritual journey. It's not it's not no more a social work. See, when you are working for your mother, sorry, when your mother is working for a child, we cannot we, we can't call that social work, right? Social service. It is the it is the devotion of that. Mother mother you know motherhood mm-hmm. so so it's the same thing if uh, any any if you are you are bringing that in your work the automatic it's, it's a spiritual journey so in nutshell i just want to say whatever i'm doing it's, uh, it's now a spiritual journey i understand what i want and do doing this mm-hmm. but yeah as you said why I, I went there or you know you asked this that uh, how it happened so yeah i was a student of political science and um, uh, you know, I went to Jammu and Kashmir State uh, when I was uh, I was in first year of my graduation. Uh, I was studying political science and uh, in that uh, various subjects. Uh, that uh, Indian Constitution is also one of uh, one of a subject there. So uh, that that you know one of a book and uh, because of that, you no know, lot of lot of. Uh, uh, Subject, you know, a lot of things are mentioned about Kashmir in the Indian Constitution. That you know, a lot of laws and lot, many things mm-hmm. are not, uh, you know, uh, applicable to Jammu and Kashmir state. So, as a political science student, it was just my curiosity to uh, why why it is like that. And many students of uh, from Jammu and Kashmir state they were in my college and university, and lot of you no know, lot of conversation in between the Kashmiri Pandit students and the Kashmir uh, Muslim students. That someone is uh, like, oh, you post us, or oh, someone, is, oh, you left us in. Middle of uh, a conflict, and you know, a lot of that fight. And at that time, you know, I'm talking about 95, 96, 97. In that year, year, year a lot of news were uh, uh, you know, coming out from JNK State, and you know, so a lot of discussions. And at the age of 19, you know, we, we just we decided like, so let's go to Kashmir for 20 days, and let's have uh, just research and study to as a student. So I went there with my 12, 13 friends. We went as a you know tour of 15-20 days as a research tour. So some, some students uh, were from psychology background, some from trekking background, some from political science background. So we went there as a sort of 13, 14 students and uh, that that 15-20 days uh, tour, it, you know, it's like uh, 
uh, almost like three and a half month i uh, not uh, i i stayed there almost three and a half month no not able to come in 15 20 days so my all friends went out just only two uh, uh, two more friends and me and we three were there and uh, we almost like stayed like three and a half month and you know we stayed because we you know if the situation was uh, uh, we understand we are, we are trying to understand situation deeply we seen so many things and then we feel like oh, we have to be here we understand more and that more understanding and developing you know that understanding develop in such a way like 22 years i am not able to come out from the nk state like 22 years i am just there only Mm-hmm. It is and, your calling. And, I, and what I see in basically, it's 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 completely. You know, I cannot you know, many times. You know, I'm not able to express in my words. But in, in again, in a nutshell, I can say that people are in suffering. Basically, you know, people mm-hmm. are in suffering, and uh, especially in conflict, women and children are you know, most. You know, they they are, you know they are like a soft targets. And uh, if uh, any community, you know, woman is. not respected children are not not protected then there is a, there is no future of that community you know there, there is no future to that community so so as a if you understand if i understand you know in, in, in before you know in 97 2000 in between this those three four years i did experience a lot of deaths you know like children like 14 16 18, 18 years uh, uh, children students uh, uh, you know they are basically uh, you know Uh, they are basically uh, ready to pick, uh, you know, ready to kill. Basically, they are going to going to uh, crossing borders. They are getting trained. They are coming back. They are basically, you know, ready to kill, get killed. Uh, you know, so this is like, you know, it's like a completely uh, stupidity. Right? I feel like, yeah, there is a. There, everyone is having some mission and all, but killing and get killed is it's not a life, purpose of life. Purpose of life is basically to experience. Yeah, so de- even de- we have. to even experience death but blasting our body there is no de- experience of death right there is two children who you know, live boys like uh, holding bomb and you know grenade in their to, to their body and just going in the uh, camps and just blasting the body. so even the experience of death is also not there so i feel like you know, this is not even you know this is not a way of living life and 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 to especially a student who is not even cross 18 Who, who who don't understand you know nothing is not having that that deep understanding so so we have to do something we have to do something so mm-hmm. when i experienced first that you know and uh, that time that then i only decided no well, i i think you know uh, nature is basically wanting me to hear so nature want me to experience all these things so that i can decide take a decision to be here and work for the community and that is that call i i you know deeply i took that call and i just i'm just there very true i think it definitely was your calling and you were meant to do what exactly you are doing uh you know all the way to jnk staying there uh of course something attracted you and as you you wonderfully put uh, you know it's a spiritual journey it's not even an ngo or a so- social work uh because once uh, it is your calling and you know that is and you're connected and you know that you're doing the work of nature uh it it is beautiful and that journey that spiritual journey uh, has no bounds and you just enjoy doing what you're doing and i think i see that passion in you completely uh, absolutely completely having said all of that you have seen the suffering you have seen women you have seen children you have seen the brutal truth you have seen teenagers like barely teens you know 13 14 16 i mean kids uh, ready to kill and ready to be killed uh and then you are there in that hostile environment trying to protect amongst all those volatile minds who kind of actually are directionless but they think they have passion which is fakely instilled in them um towards some negative uh, scenario how, how how did you gather all those guts to find uh, to fight all that situation all the people in that situation with all those mindsets all those passionate mindsets which which again think that that is their spiritual journey how do you fight that strong mentality and still take care of people you know stay still take care of their own children because i have read that you do that you take care of the children of the militants and irrespective you know child is a child 
so uh, and they trust you and uh, it seems uh, you have been kept captive quite a few times but i think god has saved you and it seems you've also said that the locals and localites have saved you and from both sides because even the militant is a localite of the area uh, but to be able to have that kind of you know trust for somebody to have the trust in you how did you do that i mean where did that confidence come uh, were you not afraid were you not scared uh mom uh, let me let me ask one question to you and you, i need a very simple a uh, simple simple answer <laughs> sure. that is the only simple answer that anyone can give uh you know the woodcutter woodcutter man who, who is holding an axe for example in his hand you know and he's just coming in in front of a tree so uh, just to cut the tree and just sat standing in front of the tree so what do you what do you think to what tree do what do i think like in what, what sense it's a, what will the tree do oh what will the tree do that's what you're saying oh tree yeah. um see honestly this is a very good question um i uh, well <laughs> uh, we can get uh, kind of uh, you know uh, diverged from here but um, i feel that amongst all the living beings trees are the most giving and then the poor guys they can't even move i mean like if if there's a flooding we all move out animals this that you know humans boats whatever but they they are the ones who have no option i mean even if they want to they can't so what can a tree think tree thinks a lot but i think what tree thinks is irrespective it's going to become manure of the earth and it will again regenerate somewhere to again give the same benefits to people and to the world and to the earth so i don't know what your yeah. exact question was but basically so, tree so, is so helpless the question is yeah so basically a uh, 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 woodcutter who is just there is holding an axe a man is holding an axe and standing in front of a tree so what is what will tree do so yes you are you said everything right yeah that is that is what was the answer of my question uh, no explanation of my, my uh, the whole 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 subject but the but the, in in nutshell the you know it's so in one word tree will do nothing Yeah, it's helpless. Definitely. What can it do? You know, it wants to. It can't. No, not helpless. It is not helpless. It is. It will do nothing. It will not. Tree is not helpless. The nature, nature of any part of nature is not helpless. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for correcting. Trees are. Trees are. Trees are the. No. So I do nothing. That is what I want to say. Militants who are coming, standing, or you know, holding me, picking, pick me, or whatever they do, they do with me. I just do nothing. Whatever they have to do, they have to do. I don't need to do anything. <laughs> they, they, you know, they, they have to create understanding. You know, see again, I'm telling you, it just happened almost nine, ten times. They hold me, they pick me, they, you know, they took me couple of hours, sometime or half day. They are in a, in a forest, and then then they, they ask me to go because they understand that okay, this this man is not basically you know a harm to them or or, or you know, it's not, I'm not basically you know nuisance to anyone. So so they understand, people understand. Uh, uh, when you are, when a person who you know, reaches to that that human, you know, and a level, they they understand. That is what I want to I want to say. That is what I want to say. So that's why I, I, I ask this question because that person who is holding an axe, he has to decide whether he has to cut that tree or not. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So the militants basically they will they will decide. They are deciding. Oh no, that we should not. We should not cut this. We should not kill them. <laughs> so so uh, and even if one i am ready to ready to ready for anything you know so that's why i said if when you, you when you become a nature you are basically that you said that you are you are you are, you are part of giving thing you know the mm-hmm. trees are giving continuously giving they are just giving even they are they are they are throwing themselves in a you know fire also when when they are there there is no life you know, in them they are they are, they are ready to even uh, go in a fire So this is this is how we have to also learn from nature. The nature is the best guru of of this universe, right? Very the true. Best guru. Very so true. so so that is what when when I I I enter in Kashmir. Whenever I you know I'm meeting people, you know it's a Himalaya, it's a spiritual land. I know every every land is spiritual. And but yes, it's a, it's a something different. And I I'm with people. I'm just trying to you know trying my every best. You know I'm just trying to give myself. Last twenty two years I never earn a single rupee. Uh, I am not able to even spend five days with my parents. You know, 
collectively, I'm not able to spend five days last 22 years with my parents. But you know, like uh, spending it so uh, time with children, giving them life, understanding them, now they are settling in their uh, uh, in their life. So this is like you know, this is uh, how I'm I'm looking. It's a, it's a like uh, we have to basically keep going, keep growing, and we have to say one day that we have to uh, the fruits we have to just uh, you know give it to the people. So this is what I'm doing. Like so many years, we have upbringing the ch- all these children. And now we are just giving back to the community so that they will start, you know, working in the community. They will start basically giving to the community. This is how we can bring, bring, you know, bring understanding. See, b- b- there is no like you, if you have to bring peace in this conflict area, it's not that oh you have to be silent. No, silence, is, silence is not a peace basically. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. we have to basically work for it. Kind of, you know, developing deep understanding is, is, you know, developing deep understanding of everything. Even a deep understanding of conflict, whether this conflict is needed or not needed, this conflict is basically helping us to to improve more is or not. So, so uh, you know, developing deep understanding of everything is uh, one day it will bring a, uh, you know, a human will have that, that peace uh, uh, at his at his place at his you know where he is basically. Mm-hmm. No, he, that that need a lot of lot of study, you know, lot of understanding, you know, this churning. So, I, I'm I'm not lo- looking that oh the conflict is where you know it's people are basically uh, you know uh, 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 not learning anything. Yes, they are learning, but in this learning, so, you know, pay, if they are going through pain is good. But if they are, that pain is not pain and the pain is they are transferred into suffering, yes, then they are, it's, it's something something not to correct. And that suffering basically bring more negativity to, to the community and to, to the human or, or, or every individual level it will bring a lot of negativity. So we people, uh, when we understand that, yeah, this suffering is not correct, uh, we have to basically work and heal the community, whatever way possible we can. Wow. What deep thoughts. I don't know who your guru is, whom you follow. Uh, I would like to know. <laughs> but you have a very big thing. You simplistically told me, you know, like I do nothing. You know, it's, uh, well, coming from the land of Gandhi, it makes complete sense. You know, I do nothing. But at the same time, you know, peace is not silence. And uh, uh, non-violent ways uh, don't, mistake them to be the silent way, ways they are the most powerful ways but at the same time understanding the true reasons uh, you know and still having that strength to do nothing and still face everything you know as a human it's not easy Ek aapke samne rifle leke koi khada hai, and then you are doing nothing to be there in that position confidently you know and then to be there again and again in those areas still keep on doing what you are doing it takes some amount of huge amount of guts and huge amount of blessings and inner confidence uh, i mean i'm talking as a normal person I, I i know you're already beyond all this but of course so no wonder uh, you are a true hero and i'm so happy to have you on our show uh, because uh, the entire purpose is basically to actually let the true heroes uh, shine or at least uh, people know about the true heroes of the world having those systems that we currently have in a sense like you know the government system the political system that is all that already exists there uh, army system you know a lot of pros and cons and a lot of you know go, uh, discussions around different angles and aspects of it what's working what's not working but ultimately we all know that it's still unsafe people don't want to live there people who are living there are are there for a reason but at the same time there's so many hindus who have been you know taken out and you know things have happened we all know Keep seeing all that if you have to suggest something beyond what you are already doing so you are according to me doing the real grassroots in fixing of this root cause so you're actually touching the root and fixing that cause because you are not working alone this tree is producing a lot of seeds yes you are a tree but then if you are having especially if you are training those girls with all those humility and positivity and that uh, you know compassion and heart it it is bound to grow and if that's how you can keep our few generations safe that place might actually change so what you said make, makes complete sense and i think that is a true um, that is a true solution, and but a very tough one, and but mm, very deep solution. But at the same time, what do you have to say in terms of other organizations who have authority in that place, 
and on their work in terms of what are they doing saying that you know they already have a responsibility in that area so any suggestions any uh, something that you want to say what should have should be done uh, to improve it or to help you uh, for that matter yeah actually uh, uh, yeah see uh, we are like a non profit non government organization so ultimately uh, uh, the government is it's having you know authority power you know capacity resources you know as an ngo we can you know become a you know we support you to to uh, bigger bigger system but to uh, yeah uh, we can basically uh, you know like uh, support to the existing system so yes we, on government level it has to you know all these problems all these issue you know government bodies even the national international level bodies they should come forward and they should basically you know work together you know ultimately we we'll have to have a mutual understanding and uh, to resolve this issue because uh, like kashmir it is not just just uh, it is it is a problem of uh, problem within within india it is it is problem with pakistan it is also china is also part of this uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this conflict so so this is not just a national issue for for the for india but it is the national three, three, uh, three nations are basically having to this uh, this this issue so we uh, yes uh, so kashmir con conflict is there it is um, also uh, you know united nations is also uh, having this you know uh, complete uh, everything recorded so uh, un is basically you know uh, uh, continuously basically watching what is happening there kashmir so it's it is not just a, just a, like a local issue you know kashmir is not like a local issue it is having you know it's its own you know uh, it's, it's having its own stand in the in national or international level so yes we have to look to kashmir kashmir jammu uh, kashmir state and uh, entire state as this uh, specific you know some something which is which is already uh, you know discussed and you know having stand on on various platform so we uh, yes Uh, what is now, now the thing is so there is a, a, a part of jammu and kashmir state is with pakistan part with russia china and part, or some part is uh, with uh, with india so what a part were like we are having like india is having uh, you know like almost like uh, one or one crore like 30 lakh or maybe one crore 40 lakh people are basically right now staying in jnk state so uh, we can basically you know uh, that it's it's our responsibility to basically you know uh, serve 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 for them you know ultimately they are part of the country uh, they are uh, part of the mainstream they are what of the is ultimately government of india is basically you know uh, uh, admin uh, having that entire administration under government of india so we it's our responsibility basically to take care of the people protect the, uh, their you know uh, protect them and you know for all uh, respect love everything we have to basically you know do all, uh, as as like just like a family so something where i feel like we have yes we are we are definitely we are not fulfilling everything what we have to maybe maybe we are not capable enough or maybe uh, we are as a country we are we don't have uh, that much uh intention to to basically uh, uh to protect and love love the community but uh, somewhere what i feel like we are lacking basically to protect uh, jammu people of jammu and kashmir yes they are basically fighting with indian government they are fighting with uh, securities they are not I mean, many person you know lot of people you know major, major person is not in jammu and kashmir they are not liking indian establishment lot of things are there i don't want to you know, get into all the, that political discussion but you know as an as a human level what i want to or i feel like as a as a establishment of jammu and kashmir you know jammu government of jammu and kashmir or government who is basically helping jammu and kashmir government what are the government establishments are there they are not working properly for the, for the for the people the why i really feel like you know there are a lot of areas almost like every area is like you know uh, 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 every area so we can improve you know quality of you know of people you know living living quality of people like for example just giving up just one example mm -hmm. there is a, in india there are like in maharashtra there is a service so you know emergency medical service 108 there is emergency medical service it like in 15 minutes you get you will get a ambulance it's a fully critical trauma care ambulance just like a running a hospital like icu mm -hmm. and you can actually feel uh, the patient if you put in a like, once in icu they you know that vehicle is definitely that i'm amb ambulance or that is icu running a hospital make it sure will make it sure that that person will not not die if, if, if no if every equipment is available in that, that yes this uh, this type of system is not at all available in entire jnk state not at all mm -hmm. in maharashtra under, under 108 there is 988 ambulances 
in in Maharashtra, one zero eight, one nine hundred eighty eight ambulance. And JNK state, there is there is only two ambulances. One is in Kanwar, which is which is the chief minister of Jammu and Kashmir. One is in Kanwar, in Kanwar, in Governor's Kanwar. So so the, the, what I want to say that for it is it is for them, but only two ambulances. And for people, there is nothing. Mm. So whether that service is running or not running, whether central government is, if central government is sending money for to enter the NKS state for emergency, then why it is not, you know, service is not started or not not in, on on ground. So so yeah, see, I, I I what I want to say that that central government may sending or really sending money to uh, to the state, but why that nothing nothing is available for people, the medical poor medical service, state hospitals are very very low, not so good service, education. The system is not right. No, many like so I do, medicine is like a seva, right? We are when you are doing, you know, medic, all medical facilities are is ultimately seva. If you are, your medical facility is very strong, community, uh, society is understand that the government is doing your seva. So seva bhav is ultimately, be, you know, bring you know two two people more together. You know, strong the bonding can can develop more strong. So, so th- th- these type of things are not available there. Maybe, maybe there are you know loopholes. There are you know a uh, lot of energy is basically drained uh, uh, because of uh, not properly basically you know channelized uh, all the, all the resources. So, but but ultimately it's the responsibility of uh, all the government that they have to basically channelize all the resources which they are uh, they saved for or they sent for uh, uh, the of JNK state so that uh, so that people will get right services you mm-hmm. know and and all good services but it's not happening there so that's why people like us they have we have to go there otherwise everyone is working properly who are people like me like uh, I should you know we don't need to basically go there so mm-hmm. so here I want to say yes we all together not only national but all international agencies everyone basically who is you know holding this you know love and respect for the all all human being we have to come together and we have to basically you know do something which is which is appropriate for this community to resolve this conflict. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for sharing all that. Uh, as you pointed out, there are uh, pretty much actually zero ambulance for people. So medical and uh, and even education sector is kind of suffering big time. Uh, well, people know that already, and then it's kind of sad reality of that place, which is um, conflict zone and uh, such highly unsafe place where people, where teenagers are, you know, ready to kill and you know be killed. Who cares about anything else? So the whole environment is. Uh, is on a different note altogether and absolutely not aligned with what you are thinking but definitely somebody needs to take an action on it and authorities you know need to do what they need to do for humans in the area well you being a hindu in that area how how do you feel not that this question really matters given a pers- the kind of person you are but still i would like to uh, ask that question uh, given the fact that you know so many hindus were forcibly put thrown out of the area with all those atrocities and what not yeah ma'am the uh, thing is uh, yeah may, when when there is a there is a like a uh, 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 mob, you know, who is basically uh, having some any uh, uh, some grudges against some particular community or particular, uh, you know, few people, you know, against few people. So then, then that mob mentality, you know, can turn into anything. So, so it, uh, what I want to say in ninety, uh, in before ninety or in ninety, Bay, or what was happening in Jammu and Kashmir and Kashmir Pandits, uh, you know, thrown out of or they pulled out of Kashmir Valley or thrown out of Kashmir Kashmir Valley. Uh, so whatever it is, I just don't. No, don't want to get into uh, no, uh, mm-hmm. that discussion. But uh, but uh, you know uh, today we are having this uh, you know uh, uh, understanding of every lot of people are carrying this understanding that oh Kashmiri Pandit there is a there is a conflict in between Kashmiri Pandit and Kashmiri Muslim. Yes, there is a conflict, but I can say that it is, it is not you know that was not a that was not basically you know Kashmiri Pandit and Kashmiri Muslim very you know like like a great family. They are a great family, but mm-hmm. but. This all thing basically come as a you know, politics and you know a uh, uh, few ones basically use that you know, as a you know uh, you know uh, like to to uh, bring a conflict into that community. So some few ones who is not a part of that community, they basically bring that politics and you know they basically you know uh, bring this uh, like uh, created this fight in between the two two brothers. 
Otherwise, Kashmir Pandit and Kashmir Muslim, you know, hundreds of years and years they are basically together. And you know, the the develop uh, in that that uh, land. But but you know, uh, some bad politics basically. You know, now today the result is that Kashmir Pandit and Kashmir Muslim are not together. Yes, by how you know, to heart, yes, they are together. But now that even like this is this is like you know, uh, like the third. Uh, it's already almost like close to 30, 30 years now, and uh, the for the generation which left Kashmir Valley, uh, you know the, that age in Kashmir and Kashmir Muslims. Now they are like almost like 60 plus, and they are like they are you know they, they in, in few years they will be not in the, in the Kashmir, not in the, you know outside Kashmir. Mm -hmm. So the Kashmir Muslim, the Kashmir Muslim who were actually connected as a Kashmiri. Now their children are not. The children in Kashmir, uh, they are they are they are not Kashmir. They are Muslim now. And the children who are outside uh, uh, Kashmiri Pandit, you know, outside Kashmir, who are Kashmiri Pandit, they are they don't have any you know any uh, uh, emotional bond with Kashmir. They just having bond with 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 uh, with, uh, with their mind that oh they they you know, someone forced them out of Kashmir and someone you know they are not going back they can't go back to Kashmir so they are it is not hard it is it is something connected with the mind so the people who connected with the, through the heart they are they in few years they will be not there so I am I am really worried that how it will happen how they, this people uh, you know community they will come I really I am really worried but what I want to say I work with both community Kashmir Pandit as well as Kashmir Muslim. So we, are, we are having a children in uh, in one home. In, it is in Jammu. It is the Kashmir Pandit, and we are having uh, other homes in Kashmir that are for Kashmir Muslim. So I am working with two communities. I am yes. In, when I started my work initially, yes, I was having all the uh, type of issues because when I entered in '97 in the Kashmir Valley, yes, many many ones they you know basically uh, uh, asked me to. Asked me to basically go out because they uh, they was like oh you are a non-Muslim and you how can I basically you know they they basically not even welcome me in their home but it's not that everyone is like that because uh, uh, many ones still helping me many many ones you ma'am just want to say that last 22 years I never had. Uh, no, uh, uh, no, never purchase or never spend money on food and stay. I always staying with people and always having food with them. So this is a hundred percent Muslim community. Like Kupwara district is a hundred percent Muslim community. I am a single Hindu there, working for the uh, for the community. Same thing. I am in Jammu. I am working for um, Hindu community, children for uh, of that community, and uh, uh, everyone is basically yeah. But but uh, as I said, uh, that bringing you know developing that trust. You know, I have to go through that all for you know all that fire and you know uh, I have to basically you know many many times religious clerics more with the issue of fatwa against me and you know they basically uh, try to convince community that uh, don't allow Adik to their homes and don't give food to to Adik uh, or to, don't uh, you know give a space to sleep and don't talk to him because he is a Muslim he is a non-Muslim and uh, make an uh, here to convert children or make a uh, here to uh, some some missionary work but they you know people understand that my missionary work is not basically you know for conversion or anything my just this is this is a you know, spiritual mission it is nothing is you know related with any religion or anything so so people you know they 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 understand they understood uh, just because i i am with with the community i'm staying with them continuously 24 7 i am with them so they understand my smallest activity but what i am thinking what i am doing what what whom i am meeting so everyone is understand everything when i am since i am there so the, what I want to uh, feel like uh, being with the community and you know community is watching me continuously that that bond is basically you know developed in a such a way that now this, that, that bond is you know based on trust and respect so so they, and because of this trust and respect is there the love is automatically flourishing so that's why we, I am able to able to you know work for the you know, children and especially girls you know a, a boy a man I, I'm still not married I'm working for girls now the girls is like 20 plus so still community is basically you know trusting me you know in, in right now in india there are many such cases happen like oh, small orphanages or orphanages basically you know uh, you know uh, under scanner now because a lot of uh, wrong activities you know uh, came out and uh, mm -hmm. it is publicized now yeah. but but uh, no, in kashmir not the, uh, there are some couple of religious organizations they also did some some you know, many things wrong 
with with girls female but a hindu who is basically coming and was staying in kashmir valley with muslims and taking care of muslim girls and a lot of religious clerics they should fatwa against me and try to basically you know uh, push me out of kashmir valley but no nothing happened and now they are more to trust right that many wrong uh, religious organization they did wrong with children and the pop pop uh, this is something different not to, uh, you know like a kashmiri but to our ma maharashtrian or you can call it a, for kashmiri i am indian but working for them and did nothing wrong with the children so ultimately it is the one way of you know developing a you know more strong bond stronger no that is that is how i am i am looking so now this is not a religion and all thing this is something beyond beyond religion that's why i said that this is now spiritual journey Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe 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 started we started you know people were having understanding that oh he is a hindu muslim now i don't feel like so i feel like yeah, it's a spiritual, spiritual journey and because of this is spiritual journey i able to basically accommodate everyone wow uh, let now uh, i have to tell this that uh, you are one of the like super heroes uh, when it comes to hindus and i think uh, me myself being a hindu i'm going to so look up to you forever and ever and ever to do what you are doing uh, in that area with where the, there are 100% muslims and gaining their trust uh, not not because of what i just said uh, because uh, what you mentioned earlier that you know kashmiri pandits and kashmiri muslims there are few still who love each other and you know our fam are like great great family but your fear is that after a few years uh you know it might not be the case just because of the time clock and uh, then will remain only the memories from mind that you know what uh muslims threw us out uh, and what not but i think because of your efforts as a hindu in that place doing whatever you are doing to help you know a place which is almost 100% uh muslims with such a pure heart with their own trust i think that feeling will stay forever and ever because of you and which has nothing to do with kashmiri pandit or kashmiri muslim it has just to do with an indian of a good soul who wants to help humanity um so great great work there uh, i don't know what else to say uh well yeah uh, as you mentioned there are a lot of uh, things happening in terms of you know Or- orphanages and you know even in a lot of other NGOs that their own kind of things going on and scams going on. Okay, after having all those fatwas and all of that, uh, you know, uh, and then of course you were uh, you know taken by militants so many times or some organizations. Uh, tell me some of uh, you know one worst experience. and then one best experience best in a sense like something that um, that touched your heart uh well everything touches your heart but then in in a layman's term if you could give me like one bad experience that kind of you know uh shrunk you inside and uh, one good experience that made you smile uh, you know for the day would you like to share that yeah uh, uh... You know, uh, when I uh, went in '97, so '97 to 2000, when we did a lot of research survey, you know, we did uh, we work with lot of uh, non-profit organizations uh, uh, in Kashmir, and we, we you know we are uh, providing them information, and we are basically you know updating, you know, basically writing reports that what is happening. So that our whole uh, you know our whole effort was we are putting all effort. just to basically that someone will start a real work in kashmir and that's why we try to uh, work with various ngos uh, through that we you know uh, we able to uh, did research and survey for unicef funded uh, one uh, research and that is for children affected by armed conflict in jammu and kashmir and uh, uh, during that that you know survey report you know we travel you know throughout the valley but you know especially few districts like kupwara and nag uh bandipora baramulla uh, and bulgam like four five district we do actually you know it was a like intensive uh, research program and uh, a couple of my friends and my you know one of my like friend or sister so so we both were basically you know uh, doing it is in kufwara and uh, for some time like, uh, for, like almost like uh, one and a half months or we are there 
and uh, this is in uh, almost 99 after the kargil war and uh, also i was in uh, you know you, you heard about the famous kargil war so i was in kargil for 6 months working for the for the migrants and uh, almost 26000 families were migrated so uh, me and a couple of our uh, you know group of friends we, we were there and volunteering for the for the, the, them in the, in the camps and uh, we set up the schools in the camps for almost like 5 6 months and uh, uh, we were there for for the children there so it's everything was voluntarily you know uh, never earn uh, not ask any salary or honor them so uh, same thing even the research which we uh, you know uh, we did for unicef uh, uh, Oh, you know uh, this uh, children of the bomb complain jammu and kashmir so we did this in kufwara and uh, you know while while you know do, doing research we we have to basically meet people we have to enter so many villages and many time we have to you know and you know many uh, such encounters like we uh, have meeting people such people who are completely like uh, uh, completely like anti hindu or anti even that uh, anti non muslim like so uh, so uh, you, you That that such encounters like every day like there are like uh, you know twenty thirty forty encounters uh, encounters like like that so uh, so but that that is okay because we we understood we you know uh, 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 develop that understanding that yes we are in that area that these things is is going to happen so one day what happened we were like uh, doing our our survey and we like so from town to like six seven villages we you know we visited mm-hmm. every village like. the meetings 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 and you know meeting people and you know talking to them and you know like we we uh, did uh, almost like till uh, 6:30 in the evening out so uh, 6:40 or 40 45 uh, and we decided to come back uh, to our town and then uh, we we started back but uh, uh the timing was not you know not very dark and not uh, not uh, you know also light it's just like you know uh, just getting in a dark when uh, it's like it it uh, you know 30 minutes it get it will be dark but that that time i was stuck uh, we are coming back to town and suddenly uh, you know in in the uh, there is 100 meters of to be able to uh, see like uh, some people you no know, group of people holding some something long in their hand and once we you know we're close uh, getting close and close so yes this uh, we understand that that there is a uh, you know high key put it in their hand and uh, i was driving uh, you know bike actually i was on bike uh, you know and the speed is just a 35 30 or 35 uh, not more than that mm-hmm. yeah, so i was i was uh, like uh, Uh, what to do? What to do? And I was, you know, thinking, uh, and I was talking. Talk, uh, Bharti, one of my colleagues, she was also uh, uh, there in, uh, on the bike. So uh, I told her, uh, Bharti, today I think we we are today. This is our day. This is our day. So she said, Yeah, I think that they are these people. Uh, these people are there and confirm we are here. They will not uh, leave us. So. We just, uh, you know, and I was thinking that, and we just, I just reached that that. Uh, to them and i not able to you know uh, 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 reduce my uh, speed because i was thinking i was in completely you know, you know uh, completely different mode you know i was not able to understand whether i have to reduce my uh, speed or i have to do something nothing i just was just you know blind like plainly i'm just numb it was like i was numb so uh but they understand that i am not you know uh, 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 less you know i i am not basically stopping so they uh, like two three came out front and two two back like hold my bike you know without uh, they just hold my bike in the through the hand and uh, uh, it's just like without break the uh, vehicle just stopped without break i did nothing but my accelerator was completely on because i was you know, i said i was numb so they 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 thought that maybe maybe i am try to run so so was one one milton basically hit uh, ak portisans back side but uh, on my uh, on my knee it's very you know he just thrashed me like like that you know absolutely like you uh, 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 hit me with with the ak portisans that that but Uh, back side uh, so I, i i was you know completely like you know the shocked and i am not able to even talk but uh, the bharti my my colleague she was she she little you know she she was 
she was afraid and she she started talking you know bhai uh, sahab uh, brother i am basically we are uh, from bombay we are here for uh, you know social work and we are here for basically for children and this and that you know she she says start started talking and we are here for uh, research survey for children at the bar concrete and we are also working for videos and this 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 so so someone basically came and started talking in english one person came and one milton terrorist came and started talking english and i was surprised we both were surprised mm-hmm. about the milton is talking in, in english mm-hmm. and uh, no yeah I, I, we both were surprised and uh, then uh, then he uh, he just asked everyone just to get calm and he just uh, he asked bharti that uh, where where from bombay so she said no no we are not from bombay we are from pune so then he said, he asked uh, told why you lied so she said no because i thought maybe you don't know pune because bombay is a you know you always you bomb mumbai and bombay always watch in movies so that's why i said this is a bomb we are from bombay area so he said i know what is what is pune uh, he he asked about few places in pune pune station and swargate few few areas in uh, places in pune so i was i was completely surprised and then he told that in 95 or 96 he came to uh, 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 90, no, no, 97. He came to uh, Pune by train, Pune station to uh, Swargate by auto, and then from uh, Swargate uh, uh, from Swargate to Bharati Vidya Pith is a, uh, again is a one university. So, uh, so by bus, then he was almost like stayed almost like a month in that area, and he wanted trying to take an admission MBBS for mm-hmm. doctor. and uh, so he tried to do that but uh, he got one information he was there almost for a month but he got information that his brother got killed in, in cross firing so that's why he came back back to kofara and uh, then then this, there are many some agencies like you know like they they basically you know motivated him and uh, he he went for uh, you know for training and then now he be, that time he became a terrorist militant so so that was the story he just mentioned and then then uh, he said yeah, i understand why you people are here don't uh, uh, don't uh, count us like like a bad people we know uh, uh, why why we are doing this you do what you want to do we are basically doing for, for our uh, nation and for our uh, you know okay. identity so 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 this is and 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 my you know my leg because uh, he hit on my right leg then one milton basically came and he just start, start away you know he kicked that uh, bike and he he, uh, he uh, you know he told me that uh, you have to you have to uh, reach on our destination don't basically leave your uh, uh, accelerator uh, no just don't leave it otherwise if you if you if it bike stop i will not come there that said to, to start it again so that, this is this is first encounter uh, you know i am see my my the thing is my english communication is not so so good so i am not basically able to express in you know or maybe maybe right way but but uh, this is what i want to say that uh, this is my first experience uh, when when i encountered 13 terrorists and uh, <laughs> yeah and beautiful and uh, and that they, they actually told me that time they told me when leaving they told me uh, no muslim will hurt you in in this here here no muslim you are basically you know aap khuda ka kaam kar rahe ho you are working for you know you are working for for khuda or you are working you know you are work it is a work of khuda you know and it's a work of god so you are you are basically you know no muslim will basically hurt you this is this is what this was you know it, it was milton who basically expired you know, expired expressed this and just say, told you, you please go go Yeah. so this is how this is my my point. and there are many ones you know i can't, can't say that which is good or bad because uh, when i saw them like from 100 meter i experienced the fear in them in me that time i experienced fear when i reached there uh, there i am t- telling you in the after after heating and everything my my fear cross fear you know to into fearlessness mm-hmm. at that moment Mm-hmm. that that fear just cross fearlessness and if i be i after the, when i left that this even the fearlessness was also not there wow such a fantastic example you gave when you know it's kind of good as well as bad first time you were scared of course when 30 13 militants are there right in front of you who wouldn't be scared with all those guns but at the same time it was very liberating and very you know positive uh, memory at the end for sure 
uh, when somebody uh, one of those militants comes and says that you are doing a work of god this itself uh, of khuda I, i mean it itself proves you know humans just care about humanity and that's the true religion of the people rest is all created of course by the people but then uh as long as they can live understand to live in peace amongst themselves like religions if they can under, learn to live in peace amongst themselves all humanity would be saved and will be blessed because all humanity all it wants is to live in peace and then any work for humanity is a work of whatever god you follow so i think in the first stroke itself you connected and you were meant to stay there and definitely you are blessed <laughs> so you are still a hindu though <laughs> just asking out of yeah i'm so i'm still i'm still uh, still uh, not with any religion yes my parents uh, uh, my parents basically uh, from amnagar district yes i am a hindu i am uh, you know uh, but working for all you know maximum girls who, who is not uh, uh, hindu and uh, working for them yes uh, but yeah i i am not yet you know if you feel say that oh i am converted from this to this you know no it's not because you know <laughs> i i read all 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 religion you know i i understand all religion and uh, i also try to see everything good uh, good into it and always learn good from everything so i don't i, I you no you really can't say uh, that i am a hindu or i am muslim now because uh, i am definitely not you know there is not a official thing that oh i am converted from hindu to muslim or from muslim to christian or christian to buddhism no ma'am i am really telling you in himalaya i am connected with lot of spiritual masters they are from buddhism they are from uh, islam they are from uh, hinduism and also for, uh, uh, you know from from uh, missionaries like christians so i am well connected because many ones be physically come and you know come there in the in the mountains they're sitting there uh, you know meditating so i'm well connected with them it's my that's why i said it's a spiritual journey so one of my master you know he told me that he given me a very good uh, 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 one one experience that he, he he told me that when a drop of water coming you know coming from a cloud and it just just uh, draw, you know and, and just reach reach to earth that, that drop basically journey uh, is basically the ultimate journey or ultimate destination is is the basically ocean the drops ultimate every drops ultimate uh, journey is basically to reach ocean mm-hmm. so since we are basically going to the ocean so why not basically give some water to uh, some person to drink or some some tree to basically you know uh, grow well so uh, it, it, this is just just to, to uh, while while going to towards ocean we can just always do all these things right we can mm-hmm. always do all these things so this is this is what we have to do so i am basically going to towards my my god i am just going towards my ocean so while while going to the ocean i can i can you know always tell people i can just give some water to them some water to this some water to that so so this is this is the this is what what you no know, guided by so so many masters so now now in the, in the journey i don't feel the thing like so any you know I'm, this water is basically drink to drinking but you know uh, hindus are drinking or muslim are drinking or anyone is drinking it doesn't matter ultimately a human is basically basically getting that water or animals are getting that water or, or the part of nature is basically taking that water to to just you know fulfill that thirst so so ultimately that's why nature is a you know, why we call a mother nature when we we become a part of a nature ultimately that mother nature will ultimately come in in, in you and you will keep keep giving so mm-hmm. so religion is if you if, if you are thinking like religion uh, is something like a like a you know uh, uh, religion is just a, just a tool right ma'am it's just a tool to understand a uh, one part of part of part of life or a part of life or just a, just understanding a life but that doesn't mean that the other person is not understanding life through the through the that religion it's not not that everyone is basically experiencing through through different different ways so i am so lucky that i am working in that area there are buddhists also there are some few person very few percent of christian also uh, muslims and then hindus it's completely colorful 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 you know uh, mountains you know i can say the colorful mountains you know with with all colorful religion people so i feel like yeah this this is i am lucky that i am there i am learning for the from from them 
and at the same time whatever i have to give i'm this is ultimately the people for you know, children like children who are basically um, in need they are getting getting support from us see i, I like to say that we are running for your homes we are having 230 girls almost like uh 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 30 uh, 27 girls have uh, so, uh, no outside uh, for higher education more than 112 girls now they are settled in the you know, after marriage and now we are building the you know, very strong five homes uh, because all these homes are in rental facility so we are trying to build all these homes you know kind of you know in the strong you know we are trying to build this home like uh, every home like 200 300 uh, girls so we started off in jammu and hope this this will you know in five this year will build five homes and at, at, at least 1500 girls we will able to adopt because in jnk state we have children in in you know orphan children in lakhs it is not in thousands it is it is there in lakhs and we have to basically you know we have to basically take care of them and if we will we'll start thinking that oh they are hindus or i am a hindu or i they are no, 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 not no, not hindus and they are not they are muslims then then this will no, i will not able to do anything i am not able to do anything just because i if i start thinking about oh, how can i i am not hindu or i am not muslim how can i do, do this how can i do then i will never, never able to work for the community i will never able to work for the community mm-hmm. that's why that's why this is this is you know we have to be uh, go beyond our own borders you know we are this borderless world foundation our foundation name is basically borderless world foundation mm-hmm. we um, Uh, uh we put this uh, uh no we basically uh, uh decided to to give uh, give this name borderless world because i experienced you know uh, marriage function and death on on loc and uh, line of country in jnk state and uh, two villages from basically a uh, pakistani one pakistani village and one indian village so they celebrated uh, marriage as well as you know uh, death uh, ceremony uh that basically one one very senior person that so all both both happy happy moment and uh, you know uh, painful moment both uh, uh, villages one is in pakistan one is in india they both celebrated they both shared they both both shared happiness they both both shared uh, uh, pain and uh, i uh, experienced that oh, oh, this is this is there is no border actually the people you know in 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 tech seven when i'm here uh, sitting in pune or delhi i feel like uh, yes uh, this uh, like always like you know uh, put lot of lot of uh, thoughts in my mind that oh you uh, pakistan is your uh, enemy and china is this and this and you know i always but when i went to our east coast border i don't experience anything like like that I, I always experience something that people are basically connect with with the local culture, language, food, and you know, b- 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 sharing, sharing, you know, cal- you know, similar concerns, you know. So, so I feel don't feel like there is a, there is any Pakistan, there is any India. I only feel b- b- Pakistan, India is just because of there is because there is the border. So, um, so, so, so yeah, so that's why that's why I feel like these people are these people hard. The heart of these people are completely that the you know there is no restriction to the heart. The heart is completely borderless, and this they are living in borderless world. They don't they 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 don't don't understand borders. They know the, though there is a border, they cannot go. This person is cannot cannot go to other village. The other village person cannot come here. But uh, they are basically celebrating marriage without going without going there without coming here. They are celebrating marriage. The boy, or girl is that side. The boy is that side. The relatives are the Indian side. The, the, the they are celebrating marriage by by you know, all the following the following the functions. Every function they are following. But but they are they are celebrating the everything. Just uh, there is one river in the in the middle middle of two village. It's a, it's called Titwal. You can you know go go and watch on you know uh, you can see on uh, map the Titwal village. The opposite Pakistan side is a Simari uh, uh, village, and there the in in between there is the Kishanganga river. Uh, uh, India called Kishanganga river. Pakistan same river. Pakistan called Nilam river. And we stayed almost like a week. And for when we went there the first day, we experienced marriage. And uh, wife was uh, 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 in that other village. And boy also from from the same. There was some village in Pakistan. He came. Wow, wow, wow! That you know, that 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 day that this uh, Mandira was going. Next day, the boy came and he basically you know uh, take that took that you know uh, 
wife or groom with uh, they they went uh, from there and the whole thing you know this village they celebrated they put they, they, they prepare food they they were like music and everything was happening there and i was surprised that oh they, these people are celebrating a marriage and they cannot go there just because it's a border and same thing like after seven days like say six or seventh day there was a death other village in pakistan the 87 person year old basically died natural death death but um, he was so senior and a uh, lot of relatives in this village you know his a uh, 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 lot of you no know, complete relatives so they they say they even you know uh, follow all that you know uh, last rituals and they basically you know for his in his memory they built something in in indian side and they, everyone prayed so in the same village we in same on same river bank of river we are seeing pakistani and indian but later we understand that they are both are hindu both, sorry both are humans they are both are humans very true they, so yeah, they are part of like a same geographical area same you know um, like village uh, but then the both uh, bride and the groom were from pakistan uh, area that side of the border uh, but then all the indians celebrated that union uh, and uh, also if death happens they do that so beautiful example i think these are the examples we need to share more in our media uh, commercial media so that they know that love truly exists beyond borders and there are still people actually you know experiencing and living that love so this need to overshadow the political news that we see these days but uh, thanks for sharing all that you did i would like you to say what all does your ngo needs right now and uh, in future what are your future plans where do you see yourself <laughs> and then i would also like to ask you where do you see yourself personally because i know your parents would love to have you yeah but i'm also absolutely sure that they're super proud of you um seriously any mom would be proud of a kid like you uh, but at the same time you know just wanted to know uh, have you ever even planned and if so what are your plans your personal as well as for your ngo uh as such there is no personal personal plans as such there is no personal plans but uh, as far as far as ngos or organization is concerned the work is concerned is we are building uh, like all these homes as as i said that we are all having five homes and we were basically you know building them now permanent so that's for the rack is you no know, structure will remain permanent whether i will be alive or not there but at least you know these structures will be remain permanent and they will basically serve the community in next 50 years or next more than 50 years so at least you know like uh, uh, establishing like a uh, good facilities for uh, for the you uh, know 1500 plus uh, girls uh, so you know so that uh, they will they will get to uh, you know protection and you know everything uh, through the through that home houses uh, or hostels we can call it hostels so we started building hostel in jammu right now and so uh, stories fully um, it will have resources and financial support yes we will also do that say same in, in kashmir more four homes and uh, also we are running uh, uh, for emergency care or critical trauma care ambulance service in jammu and kashmir state so uh, that is also go- going there so nine ambulances are working and we are looking uh, for more uh, such ambulances so that we can you know uh, uh, set up those ambulances in uh, that community and uh, we can save more more people uh, that is how we are you know right now that is our uh, uh, you can say that uh, specialty that uh, we are working for children and working in emergency medicine so here yes we need a support we need a, need a uh, all type of type of support definitely financial support is uh, included but um, if, uh, it's not that every time the financial support is uh, needed sometimes volunteers can come they can come and they can work with us if nothing is no you know everyone can just pray for us because ultimately prayers are the are the ones who are basically uh, ultimately uh, yeah ultimately uh, the prayers are basically who are you know protecting us in that that uh, that situation so uh, so every type of you know support you know is that i said that prayers are also you know, support to us so blessings are also support to us so any type of support is it's uh, important to us uh very true uh, i think comes from a person who wants to be a tree and who wants to be a drop that helps anything and everything that it can before it reaches the ocean we as a community should come together we must come together and help such a soul 
uh, who I, I think you are actually creating more of your replicas by doing so and I hope even after you somebody continues it and takes it further and one day that land be a peaceful the truly a peaceful and spiritual land the way it has always been and uh, as you've mentioned in so many of your examples the hearts are anyways connected and they don't know boundaries um, and so does your organization and may your organization grow and keep growing to a great 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 levels and extent i would also like to add that, uh, that one point you said uh, regarding your communication let me put you tell you this the purpose of any kind of communication is to basically connect with somebody else and convey the message appropriately and you are connecting with so many souls and conveying your message so wide and clear to gain trust of anybody and everybody in that area and beyond that area internationally. I know you work with NSF, UNICEF. So you, uh, you have to be one confident person because we all are actually looking up to you and uh, we respect and salute your confidence uh, to work in that area in those situations. So keep rocking, keep doing the great work and thank you again for giving us your precious time. It means a lot. It, it really means a lot to, uh, to be able to talk to people like you and uh, to be able to be part of your journey in any which way we can. Uh, let us all help this uh, amazing soul, Adhik Kadam, <laughs> right here with us and uh, his foundation, Borderless World Foundation. You can Google it up, find all the information uh, and help him and contact him in his amazing journey and amazing uh, mission that he has chosen, which is not a tough one, which is not an easy one at all. It is a tough one. <laughs> so kudos to you. Keep up the great work. And uh, thank you so much, Adik. Thank you so much. And may your organization grow exponentially and without any bounds. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for inviting me here. Thank yes. you.